Right. And it's amazing that it's almost, it's just after midnight here. Oh, yeah? And I understand it's early morning where you are. So. Yeah, it's 9 o'clock. And you've changed the clock. That's the reason why it's now 15 <laughs> hours difference. I know, I didn't, I, did, I wasn't aware of that. Somebody came up while I was sitting there having a sandwich and they were like, which direction did it go, forward or backward? And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I didn't have any clue, so. That's, right. That's totally right. fine. Yeah. So you were probably right in your first uh, calculation, but just didn't factor in the but time the, change. The, the, clock, the clock has changed. Yeah. And I'm here, here because I'm in Siberia, as I've told you, and, uh, in, and it's technically part of Russia. And uh, they canceled this clock messing around two, two or three years ago. We don't change the clocks anymore. Oh, really? So, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like so, a good idea. <laughs> it is. It is because uh, we all know about this time changing. Right. The way it affects everything. How do you pronounce so, your name? Is it Ehor? It's Ehor. It's your pronunciation of my name is absolutely correct. Okay. Uh, and, <laughs> and I know how to pronounce your name. <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, just Gary. It's very simple. <laughs> nice meeting. Yo. So that's where the silence comes up. <laughs> oh, it's always there. <laughs> By the way, I was going to say, uh, Gary, that you know I really appreciate your your silence. You know, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I appreciate your silence yeah. uh, in your videos because I, I uh, yeah. and I was going to ask you actually. Do, do you do you do you realize? I'm I'm sure you do that. It's like silent poetry in many in a way. <laughs> silent poetry. Silent yeah. poetry. Yeah, and uh, and that, that's the way I perceive it anyway. So. Yeah, it's like um, you know Alan Watts. Have you heard of him? Yeah, of course. Yeah. He always would talk about how if you're if you're looking at music, then the music is it's half the sounds and then it's half the pauses in between beats and tunes and melodies. So it's just as important and necessary as all the jabbering. It's just that if you have this idea that silence is awkward, then some people are kind of scared of it. <laughs> yeah. So. so you're in Siberia? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing a translation uh, assignment here for, I was, uh, I, I saw it for another two weeks, but it could be that it would last for another two months. So, so you're from the Ukraine? Well, I, I, I'm Ukrainian, but I, I was born neither in Russia nor in Ukraine. I was born in Soviet Central Asia, when the Soviet Union still existed. Uh -huh. Because my ancestors went there like at the beginning of the 20th century and uh, it was essentially a Russian, uh, Russian Empire's colony and uh, there were a lot of Ukrainians and, uh, and Russians there ever since end of 19th century. So that's how, I, so I was born there, not far from China, okay. basically. And, uh, and uh, but but I have a Russian passport and uh, and uh, and and when and I lived in Ukraine when this whole ordeal started between Russia and Ukraine, so I kind of moved here. So that's the story. In brief. Nice. You know, and you're in California, Gary. I'm in California. Yeah, I'm right on the beach right now. What are we eating? <laughs> like half a mile away? Yeah. Half a mile. We could we could watch we could walk to the beach right now. I can hear it from the house. <laughs> yeah, if you get a hot spot, you could show them poetry. Robbie, you need to bring your hot bring, turn your phone into a hot spot, and we'll walk to the beach. Show <laughs> oh. me your phone. <laughs> Two a.m. Sunday, November fifth is daylight savings time. You guys didn't know about it either. So it's daylight savings. Is that nine? Is it nine o nine right now? Is that right? 
Yeah, I'm I'm very close to the uh, the, the coast. Two a.m. Sunday, November fifth. So, uh, tell me a little bit about you. What, how did you come to all of this? Oh, um, well, I, I don't know where to start, really. I mean, whatever is called awakening is for what, like, in its, uh, I guess, uh, September 11th, you know, to some yeah. Yeah. you know, uh, because prior to that, uh, I mean, I remember some events in my childhood and I guess I always, uh, you know, was uh, that kind of person, yeah, but, you know, as we all grow up and, you know, the story, yeah. school, etc., system, it kind of uh, suppresses, as we all know, uh, who you are, but then September 11, you know, 2001, it was just like, <laughs> That's it. I just I just dived deep into 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 that and the ever since hole. then, yeah yeah just uh, 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 research and listening to Alex Jones at that time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not I'm not listening to Alex Jones anymore because <laughs> uh, because of the of the rage and, uh, and the rest of it. And, uh, yeah, but otherwise, uh, and then gradually moved to David Icke, and uh, and then, as I told you, even uh, helped my friends in Ukraine to organize his uh, visit there and the talk, and, uh, and so for for a few years it was David Icke period. And uh, so you hung out with him. You met him in person. Yes, I met him in person. Um, we we basically looked after him in terms of. You know, he stayed there. Yeah. And, uh, so it was like a small group of people, maybe five or six of us there in Kiev, in Ukraine. And I did translation as well because I translate her and money. So, yeah. Uh, Is that your profession, yes. translator? Yeah, yeah. I, I studied languages in university. Okay. So. And, uh, and so it was, a, it was a, like a big, uh, a big doing for us because. We felt uh, he had a lot to convey, and uh, and it was only like his second uh, Central Eastern European country, former Soviet bloc country, he had, he'd ever visited at the time. So it was like for him, it was also a new experience. Yeah. And uh, yeah. How did you so, like him in person? How did he strike you? I found that uh, um, we didn't really have any personal contact outside outside anything to do with the interviews and uh, the talk itself. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm just saying this in a very neutral sense here. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. just a fact of life that. Uh, there was nothing personal. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and so I don't have much to tell about this. <laughs> yeah, no, and, uh, but otherwise, uh, uh, it was quite, it was quite uh, an event because uh, a few unusual things happened at the time. And, yeah. Uh, and it was three years prior to three years prior to the events in Ukraine, mm -hmm. which were quite uh, fundamental and uh, and, uh, and of course it was all happening in several areas, in various yeah. areas, yeah. Um, energy level as well. And, uh, so to a huge extent, I still don't quite know what had happened then. With Ike and or with Ukraine? With uh, with Ike's presence there, mm. because uh, it was um, it was an energy doing as well, obviously. Right. And, uh, um, but but what exactly and how and what and uh, I still don't know.
Uh, will I ever know? Fully, I don't know. <laughs> so, and uh, and how's about you? How did you come to that? <laughs> 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 well, I guess you tell you you say a lot in your videos. But, uh, yeah, I, I have I have touched on it quite a bit, but I think it was the the weed experience. I don't know if you've watched that one, but I think it was the video was called "Weed Is My Montauk Chair." Did you see that one? No, I didn't. Yeah, it was. I had this experience where all of the the forms just basically showed that they were pretending to be like this is a big pretending and that had never I had never had any notions like that whatsoever before that and it was super traumatic and took me many years to integrate and to figure out what it was that had happened but that's like what started it and then after that you know and also just the fact that the given, the given story via media and government and all that became progressively fake, I guess. It became, it's degraded over time, so it's becoming to where it's just kind of comical now instead of that there's any semblance of having anything to do with what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I also find that uh, there is... I, I just do not relate to relate to 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 anything that is happening in the so-called political life and uh, whatever is the conventional entertainment is producing. You know, it's just it's like a totally different realm, a totally different world, and and uh, it's well, it's, it's bad. to me the the political world is. Just another arm of the money monster, and that's all it is. It's oh not, yeah, it's not oh, any. Yeah. It doesn't have anything to do with humans whatsoever, aside from using them as cattle or energy slaves or something like that. It has nothing to do with. It's just power play with money. It's, that's just it. Nothing else. It's a service, I guess. Uh, yeah, and, and the interface. Yeah, it's like a program. You can log in. You know, watch the news. Log out. <laughs> <laughs> What did you say, Eden? It's low, low vibration. Oh, I was reading on the uh, on the internet yesterday because I was looking up how alcohol had a low vibration. Uh -huh. But even um, red wine has a vibration of like five hundred or five hundred fifty hertz, and the news has a vibration of like three hundred hertz, like lower <laughs> than alcohol. What? And it's because um, because it's all like sadness and anger and things like that. And so when right. they record it. The vibration is super low. Right. I think is really, really interesting. So this is a mechanical measurement that they did. I think so. Yeah? Yeah. Because uh, doesn't the Earth have a vibration of like a thousand or something? I don't know. Um, so yeah, That's I what I've heard as well. A thousand? So what are humans normally at, do you know? What's your average Joe human vibrating at? <laughs> wow. <laughs> What I've heard is uh, uh, whenever you take a substance like alcohol or say marijuana or any psychoactive substance and if your vibration is higher than the substance then it would lead to uh, depression and fear and panic attacks. Because it tries to equalize. It tries to equalize between that energy and your energy. So if you're, I think that's what was happening to me with weed. It was trying to bring me to that, and I was I was past that, or whatever you call it. And I expected it to be some sort of a high, but it wasn't a high. It was very much a, a binding, contracting, horrifying experience. So you must have, your frequency must have been higher than at that stage. Already. Yeah. So. Yeah, it wasn't good. I mean, it was a good lesson, I guess. It was a good insight, but it wasn't... <laughs> There's nothing fun about it. Really? Yeah. My arms and legs were on fire. So. You never have you ever had that? I think I'm allergic to it. I think I'm allergic to it. Oh. 
Oh, you're gonna have to stop drinking alcohol. Now. I think so. <laughs> Just for Reiki only. Mm -hmm. Drink your Reiki every day. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's kind of when I started. I don't know, none of this, even when I was a kid before all this stuff happened, all of the organized things never set well with me anyway. The, the religion stuff didn't, the, organized, the politics stuff didn't, the money stuff didn't. Even when I was in school and listening to people talk about stuff, it's still, I, I didn't really relate to them even there. I just kind of absorbed information. That's just how it's always been for me. Mm. And I didn't think there was anybody else that was, you know, like a lot of other people, I felt isolated because it felt like there was no one else around. And even just now, like I'm very slowly starting to meet others. And that was like a big relief for me to know that there were other people out there. Mm. It's 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 a huge support because. Yeah, where like, have you been, Eden? Why do you take so long to show up? <laughs> and, and also, you don't. Uh, uh, I found that uh, there is this uh, uh, friend uh, I have in Ireland who you 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 you've been in touch with recently, mm -hmm. time. and uh, she helped me to to retrospectively. Uh, understand, realize you know, who, who who I am and who I was when I was a child. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's like it, it's just all making sense to me now. So it's like it, it, it really is. Uh, I I realize now essential to 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 be with other people and to to see what they see in you, and mm -hmm. uh, and it helps them as well because. Well, what you see in them, they all don't see right. somehow, right. you know. And uh, so it seems, it seems it's it's just the way it is. It's how it works, so to speak. How it grows. Yeah, so it's it's it's, 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 you, it's good to see. You expand them and they expand it's, it's you. Good. You expand them and they expand you. It's it's a mm. it's, it's a widening for both parties. I'm just them seeing kind of puts a name on on your uh, experiences and, 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 and on your um, properties uh, on who you are. Mm -hmm. or, I would say so. You know, so I'm a bit concerned here that I don't really, I have so much to say, but I, I don't know if I have anything to say, <laughs> Gary. <laughs> so. Yeah. You sound kind of like, um, <laughs> you sound kind of like Eckhart. Your voice sounds like? similar. Eckhart Tolle? Have you heard of him? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never actually. Uh, I've heard of him, but I've only read maybe a couple of. Uh, I'm probably being really racist. But, or yeah, I don't know. <laughs> your voice sounds similar. Maybe he's maybe he's from the Ukraine. I don't know. No, he's German. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's German, but I've never actually heard his voice. So, so <laughs> uh, interesting. I, I, I will, I will, I will listen. <laughs> yeah, he's good. Right. He never has anything to say. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> he does talk a lot, though. <laughs> right. <clears throat> yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah. yeah. But but, <clears throat> but from whatever I read about, uh, whatever I read from him, it's uh, I found I just had this feeling that. His spirituality is very, he treats spirituality in a very instrumentalist kind of way, like it's a tool. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's my impression. I, I could be wrong, but and I haven't read much of him. But it's just, I, I would always sense this energy from him uh, that spirituality is a tool. Although, from what I know, you know, he had some amazing experiences where when 
like everything was silent. And mm -hmm. you know, the, his transformation was quite intense and fundamental for what I remember. But but still, I have this feeling that it's for him. It's it's a tool, uh, and <clears throat> and this is something, Gary. You know, I find increasingly like unacceptable. You know, I just it's just totally totally unacceptable. I find to kind of treat spirituality in this way because it, if that's the way then all you end up doing is uh, fit it in the matrix yeah. you 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 evolve you get you go to a retreat in any way in every way you yeah. have whether it's a retreat as an as a, as a as a place, or or you just stay at home and and uh, go into retreat and and you recharge. Yeah. I don't and get that impression from him. You, that's good. That's good because from him, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good because <laughs> I, I could be wrong. I haven't, as as I said, you know, I haven't read. But but, uh, but otherwise, you know, when it comes to this whole issue of recharging and going back into the matrix, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, from uh, from what I get from him is that he he doesn't claim to have any control over what happened to him. His life was a shit show, and he was feeling suicidal and holed up in his apartment and wishing he was dead, essentially. And then one day he woke up, and just everything had changed. Yeah. And then he stopped going to work, he stopped doing anything, he stopped talking to friends, and he just walked outside and the whole world was new for him. And he just walked around in the park for like three months and slept on park benches. That's, that's what he says. And when I listen to him talk, it's, uh, I don't feel like he's trying to give any tools or anything. All he's doing is telling you to be present. That's what his book is called, is The Power of Now, which is just, he's just saying that's what's real. What's, what's not real is the projection, so stay where the real is. And this is something I was going, I was going to, 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 to tell you as well. But, uh, uh, is every day coming since, uh, say, especially in the last two months, you know, I absolutely feel so reluctant to even think about tomorrow. And I realize, it. and it's been it's been going on for quite a while, but especially in the last two months, I just feel I absolutely am in the now, and I don't even want to think about tomorrow. You know, it's, it's yeah. like you, you know, it's just it's and. Uh, and I, I, I wonder what you think about the the because uh, I've been talking a lot with uh, uh, people about this, a uh, couple of people about this, uh, the language, and this is something which is close to to, to my home because I, I I work with language and studied the languages. So it's like the language, uh, the way the way the way uh, uh, languages are like English or. Or any other language, yeah? mm -hmm. uh, it's it's very much about these uh, projections, and it's very much yeah, about yeah. the future, and it's very much about the future and this ten tension and uh, stress of it and the neuroticism of projections. Right. And and in a way, if you are uh, unconsciously using this language, still subconsciously you are not quite in the now because the language as a program is programmed to to take you into the future and, and not be in the now. Right. I was wondering what you think about it. I think when uh, when you first start learning words and you start learning to communicate, I feel like that happens very unconsciously and you don't even know what's happening for the most part. And then at a certain point, you're old enough to realize that, to realize, to actually feel what's actually going on when you're communicating. Because if you don't actually look into what, what's going on when words are flying out of your mouth, then 
it still can be happening very subconsciously. But the way I view the, the language is it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be thrust into projection mode just because you're speaking, because I don't do that. I don't, most of the time I barely even pay attention to what I'm saying, but it's, it's still, <laughs> it still is cohesive and makes sense, but it doesn't involve any planning or precognition or anything like that. And it's just like a, it's a practice of releasing it as soon as whatever you're saying is done being said. Yeah. Instead of trying to like grasp onto the meaning and that whole thing, because the, me the meaning is what gets you into the projection mode. Oh, man. I can't answer this. <laughs> I need to answer it, but I can't. But yeah. Um, I can't. It's a person. <laughs> I can't. I'll call her back. All right. Um, yeah. Um it's just I find that uh, it's almost like uh, we we like I personally would love to to create a language or, or contribute to create a language of now, you know, because there are people also, doing that. Pardon? There are people doing that. Right. Yeah. There. Right. I, I know of one individual in particular who has started this. It's a language where the focus is more present oriented and mm. it does, because our language is full of legalese type stuff and it's full of kind of negative binding concepts, the English mm -hmm. language. And uh, he's trying to create a language where it's not so easy to trap the people who are using it. And uh, and even uh, you know uh, there are languages uh, uh, which which don't have future tense for instance huge what you know like future tense oh right right it's always it's always present right you know, even when you talk about the future right and, uh, so this is something helpful I guess yeah I remember um, what was his name. I don't remember his name. He's a he's an author. He wrote he wrote. <laughs> I can never remember things when I want to. But he was similar to Orwellian style of writing. Um, what is his Huxley. name? Huxley. Huh? Huxley. Huxley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huxley. In his book, uh, Brave New World, I remember there was a part where the, the guy, the, the, the main character was, he was in the forest or whatever, and he was having a talk with somebody, and there were actually birds in the forest that said, be here now, or like they, those parrots that were taught to like say that. So everyone in the village, they'd constantly be hearing that. Because that's what we always need, is we always need to remind ourselves to be present, because we forget every second. Two more seconds, it's like, oh, back in projection land, it's hard to control it. So that, it's good to have some sort of a tool or a koan, that's what a koan is. It's something that continually refocuses your attention, because we forget. Because you never actually reach any future moment ever. <laughs> it never happens. Um, um, it's, just, it's, it's just like it's, it's your, your little bubble is here and it's moving and the future is moving. You know, it's, it's doing this. So it's not like you need to. It's kind of it's kind of fun as game or whatever, but it's not. If you sit there and think you know you're gonna get there, you're you're deluding yourself. You don't ever get there, and that that was when I that was another thing that our minds have really a big trouble comprehending and it was super traumatic for me to even see that. I saw that when I got high that one time. 
Because we think it's real. Like, we're taught it's real. We're taught the past is real. Future and the past are just both... They're, they're both mental projections, but until you feel that, like, you really feel it. If you have never felt it before, then that that's what ego death is. It's very traumatic. You know, a couple of days ago, Gary, you know, all of a sudden, uh, it happened quite all of a sudden. I just, because because I, I, I translated that plant and... Uh, uh, there was a need to go outside because normally we are in the office all day. Yeah? Mm -hmm. There was a need to go outside and it was quite a warm weather. Uh, and for some reason it, sprang, it smelled spring, although it's autumn here. <laughs> yes, in your place as well. But it just smelled like spring and that's, that was the moment of now when I realized that sometimes, you know, it's just, it's enough. It was overall. It was quite a depressing day uh, because of lack of sleep and etc. Yeah. yeah, but uh, monotony etc. But but this breath of fresh air and and there is so much nourishment and meaning in this fresh air. It, it's it's quite wonderful. It, it, came, it came into the building that you were in, that smell? No, 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 no. It was outside. Oh, you were already outside. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I went outside and uh, it just smelled uh, the wind and, uh, and uh, the yeah. fresh air. And it yeah. was uh, <clears throat> it's just amazing how there is what you call information there, which is a nourishing information. I still don't know how to, to best describe it, but. I wonder what uh, what what your thoughts are about this. It's the because I mean the, it's what the they it's what they call the ether. You know, it's the yes, yes, yes. It's, it's the whole field. Yes. I I feel that all the all the information is always here. It's not it's not far away or lost or hidden or anything. It's just that the more you're projecting, the further away you are from that. That's right. And what I find, uh, what I also find, it, it's not, it's, it's, it's been, I've been noticing it for quite a while, but I find it's actually nourishing, you know, yeah. uh, spiritually nourishing. And when you are spiritually fulfilled and nourished, it's like you don't even want to eat <laughs> physically. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> you know, you just, you just don't need it. <laughs> yeah. you don't need to eat, don't need to breathe, all these things. <laughs> No, you, you, you need to breathe. <laughs> um, but um, there are there yeah. are those ones called breatharians. They claim to not need food. I've never met one, but <laughs> it could exist. But I hear people live on prana. I mean, apparently in Russia uh, there are some, and I've I've, uh, I've read about this. Girl who who does live on prana and uh, yeah and it's been uh, it's been it's been documented so to speak it's been checked and proven that she is so, so if you if you take seriously the notion that we have a hand in creating the reality that's around us then not having to eat or not having to breathe would simply be how good you are at creating your reality whether you've gain power over that aspect of it or not. I don't know if that's a necessary thing to do or maybe for, <laughs> maybe for some people it is, I don't know. I've never, I mean, I can go, the, I can go the day without eating. I've done it many times and I don't feel hungry, I don't feel tired and then I'll eat eventually at some point, but, and uh, as well, I haven't been eating meat for like three or two or three months so that, I think the meat craving is a really big uh, thing that makes us want to eat. If you're not having the meat craving in particular, then you don't feel as like, ah, I want to eat, want to eat, got to eat. When you don't actually have to eat. Mm. But I feel like the more 
the more you can remain present and stay out of the projection land, then the more diverse your experience can be. Because our projections are limited. It's a recycling of the past. It's not anything new for the most part. That's why they say, you know, the, the, the history repeats itself. That's what they're talking about. The projections are same forward and backward. It's when you're able to stay, stay in the moment, that's when, like, new information can come in. That's where the real variety starts. Yeah, yeah. Um. But then, uh, you know, my intention is, you know, Gary, like right now, I realize that uh, this is probably my last uh, few weeks in this kind of uh, uh, space where, which still requires certain projections and not really uh, being in the now, you know, and because when you're tied to certain schedules, you know, and you, this work thing, you know, yeah. um, you are inev inevitably affected by, by uh, this environment. Right. Know, and you, it's not, it's not, it's still not quite your pattern and it's still not quite your place and space and, Right, and uh, and that's 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 what I feel. You know, next, the last next, the next few weeks will be the last weeks, and I'm I'm, I'm literally going into forest. You know, quite frankly. Yeah. And uh, yes. And, You're able uh, to do that. You don't. You you don't. Uh, money isn't bugging you as much. Well, that's why I'm here now. Uh, uh, I'm earning some money, and. Okay. Uh, and uh, and then I will have a certain reserve. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and I can just go into the forest, and, <laughs> <laughs> and I will not need much money there anyway. Go, so. <laughs> go find a cave. <laughs> but then go find a cave to sit in. I, I'm not sure I'm ready for a cave, <laughs> but at least at least a modest a modest wooden house. You know? Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. No, no need for for electricity, even you know. The, the, yeah. Uh, I mean, you can always charge your computer in the in the village of your phone. So. Yeah, you, you can buy one of those little cranks. You know, you crank it. Yeah. And you power. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so we'll see what happens. It's just I really want to be in the now. Yeah. And 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 I'm uh, I'm kind of for. Uh, Progressing in this sense, but uh, but uh, how's your family with with everything? I, I've had this conversation with I think everybody who's on any awakening path has had some clashes with family. Do you have those? Uh, yes, yes, uh, not so. Yes, especially with my sister. Uh, she just. Uh, totally shuts down, you know, she's been, she's uh, shut down, like, quite abruptly a couple of years ago, it's like, until then, she was still, I could still hear, see in her eyes, uh, the sister, the human, the being uh, I love and relate to, mm -hmm. and uh, something happened, like, maybe two years ago, it's just like, we just, we just, she 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 doesn't even talk to me. You know? Yeah. Even when I she lives in in Spain, Barcelona, and whenever I go there, we hardly talk. She just doesn't want to talk about anything. You yeah. know? Even about like uh, things which are seemingly unrelated to the to many spiritual topics, even anything mundane, because she doesn't want any energy exchange. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because, yeah, so... Do you have a wife but, and kids or anything like that? Pardon? Do you have wife or kids? No, 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 no I'm not married. Okay. No. no. Huh. I went with my mother, it's it's actually, you know, quite good, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, she is, uh, she is, she knows a lot. She's always, she always has known right. a lot. So, um, but, um, Father? Oh, uh, he died uh, in 2001. Oh, right, at 9-11, huh? Uh, soon after, actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, so I'm quite young. You know, so, so, um, how was he when you, uh, how do you remember him as? Um, we had a very difficult relationship. Yeah. Always, yeah. So, uh, but, uh, he was a post-war generation and, uh, they had, uh, they had a very tough childhood, a lot of uh, uh, hardship. Yeah. And uh, his uh, father, my grandfather, he came back from the war, and therefore they were traumatized badly. And uh, so, you know, uh, it was tough. It was tough for them. So they, they, they basically went through a lot of abuse and you know, right. hardship. Right. And and they didn't know how to break that circle and, uh, and be nice to their kids. They tried, <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah. but it it didn't always work. Yeah, the our our generation of parents just has a completely different mind than we have. What? How old are you? Ah, uh, forty-seven. You forty-seven. So you're maybe half a generation ahead of me, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Something like that. But even so, almost the baby boomer generation, we call them here. Um, like parents parents that were born in the 40s, 50s. Yours were probably maybe 30s, 40s. Uh, 48, 47. Oh, my dad was born in 48. Yeah. Yeah, they just have a different, different everything. And there is that, there's that unbridgeable gap or barrier that I just accept it for what it is. And I don't try to push it because I know they're not going to change and there's no point in me trying. I might as well just enjoy what I do have there, you know? True. True. I agree. Because <clears throat> you never convince anybody of anything if you're trying to like... Everything comes from work. the... Yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah. You, you change them in the opposite direction, if that's what you're actually trying to do, but you don't ever move them toward what you're wanting, if you're trying to force it. If you're trying to just share your story or share your opinion, then with the unattachment to the outcome of whatever that interaction is, then you might actually change somebody, but it's still not in your control. That's true. That's how I see it too. Yeah. So are you gonna are you gonna have internet access when you go off into the woods? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because uh, you know we <laughs> we need it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know. uh, but well, I'm 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 considering going to to uh, Belarus it's uh, also former Soviet Union country between Poland and Russia and Ukraine and uh, basically I, I uh, there is a book I want to write with uh, that person who we talked about who is it moment. it's on Callahan and Callahan from, from Ireland oh yeah I think she um... I think I communicated with her on Messenger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a couple of times. I right, guess. Right. Yeah, and uh, so so basically, uh, there is a book I want uh, to write together with Arn, and uh, it's for children, mm. and uh, it's to help the children who are sensitive. And, uh, yeah, and uh, to help them handle this world, <laughs> <laughs> this real, and uh, but. Um, but it, it would most likely be a fairy tale.
yeah, yeah. some description. And they're... That would make it more palatable for the parents if it's not claiming to try to be teaching, you know. That's that's how Walt Disney and crew got all their stuff through, you know. And, uh, and I also, uh, it so happens that on one of those trips with uh, translation trips here in Siberia, I found an illustrator, an artist, uh, who is Siberian. Mm -hmm. and, and he is just a perfect illustrator for this group. Nice. So we have an illustrator already. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is something which I really want to do. And, uh, and I think the best place for this would be a forest, a small hut in the forest. And, uh, and on the other hand, it's, it's, uh, it's in the middle of Europe. You know, and and it's uh, like you can go, you can take a bus and, and be in Prague in six hours time. You know, mm. <laughs> like literally. Nice. You know, and uh, is Anne going with you, or you're going out there by yourself? No, 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 no. I mean, we'll we'll probably you know, no, no. She she she's got her her things to do in Dublin, but uh, you're going you're uh, going by yourself. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but but, but I, I I really want to meet with Anne and uh, you know and talk and, uh, about this because you know she is such a such a um, she knows so much about these kids you know yeah the sense of kids and uh, um, she knows so much <laughs> about a lot of things. And how how uh, is she is person. she in the, is she uh, involved with kids somehow in her profession? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She's 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 helping with advice and uh, to helping the parents and the kids mm. and, uh, to 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 basically communicate and find you know to see who they are and, right and. Uh, find a way to to live in peace and love together right and understanding and the understanding so it is definitely needed they don't get that in public schools oh that's <laughs> another point that's another thing you know the the homeschooling and unschooling and uh, unschooling uh, yeah <laughs> This is something which uh, which uh, I I consider because I want to leave translation. That's like I've, mm. I've had enough of this. You know? Okay, I really I've had enough of this. Uh, so I, I, I that's what I want to do. You know? I, uh, maybe do some um, How do you call it? Uh, basically, there are. Uh, if there, if there is, if that's the way it goes, then uh, the, the, there is a family here in Siberia uh, who uh, who have their own uh, health health business, which is basically herbs and uh, essential oils from Siberia, like cedar oil. Mm -hmm. And and I know someone in Indonesia who produces good Indonesian, a uh, good uh, coconut oil. So maybe this is something that I want to do. Just basically yeah. sell that stuff, something healthy and, and good. <laughs> uh, just have a small shop or something. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but, uh, you just have to move towards it. I mean, yeah, it's already happening. Uh, it's just a matter of staying in that space, you know. And it will—it happens how it's supposed to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not always how we want, but <laughs> how it's supposed to. Be. Yeah, yeah. I, that's that's. Uh, yeah, you're you're right. It's just knowing what you want, and uh, then it happens. Yeah. It does, but but again. Uh, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Right, right. right. <laughs> uh, What's the temperature like over there? Is it freezing cold? Mm -hmm. No? 
It's, uh, it was very warm yesterday. It was about 10 plus 10, which is Africa by local standards. <laughs> and, uh, Do you know what the conversion is, roughly? Oh, Fahrenheit. Um, Fahrenheit. Uh, oh, sorry. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. They can pull out their calculators. Uh, uh, if it was something easy like 2.2 .2 times, but it's it's a complicated formula to get it. Yeah. There's like yeah. multiple levels involved. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I used to remember it even a couple of weeks ago. I would I would have told you, but... Uh, but it's like <laughs> 2 times this and then minus 13 or some, something. It's some uh, multi-level. It's not a hard equation, but it's not easy to remember. But it's like zero is freezing temperature. That's when the uh, water becomes ice. Zero Celsius. So zero, so zero would be 32 degrees here. Oh, uh, right. So we... Right. So it must be about 45 here. Plus, um, something like this. Okay. Mm. Not, not too far above freezing is what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> 40, 45, 45 we would consider pretty cold here, I think. Because we're pampered. <laughs> yeah, it's California. Yeah, I know. San Franciscans start weird. complaining once it's above... What is it? 75, Robbie? 80? <laughs> I don't know what that is in Celsius, but... Anything above... Are you going to look it up? 23.8. Any, anything above 23.8 we start complaining about. Too hot. Hey, buddy. Right. But it's just because the temperature here is only, it doesn't change very much. It doesn't get super hot and it doesn't get super cold. Just rarely. But it's nice weather. You can, you can see out there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I will not even show you anything outside because it's absolutely dark. It's actually it's uh, almost one. I'll bring, no. I'll bring you outside. All right. <laughs> the yard. <laughs> I won't show the yard. How about that? So the beach is just that way, just like half a mile. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. It's nice. Well, I'll show you. I'll show you the Siberian Siberian night. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. You don't see much, do you? <laughs> I see some lights. Yeah. Yeah, some lights. <laughs> Not much. So. So for me dark. to get you, for me to get your day, we would have to do evening my time. Um. Mm hmm. Yeah. But but I, I'm I I'm at the plant. Uh, I'm in the office from from uh, eight o'clock my time, eight a.m. my time, uh -huh. until uh, six, six thirty p.m. my time. I know you're impressing me with your moves. <laughs> Should I let them watch you do yoga? So it's like I watch you do yoga. Oh, I've never done this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I couldn't do that. I'll break. I think. But yeah, I'm not that flexible. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so we have 15 hours difference, and uh, and I'm normally I'm in the hotel like around uh, eight. PM my time, mm. which is uh, which is uh, uh. twenty, which is five AM your time. <laughs> it's too early. <laughs> I was up early today. I was up at like four thirty. All right. Yeah. yeah. But I, I don't have any schedule. I just wake up whenever. I haven't had a schedule in a long time.
Are you going to visit the U.S. ever? I've never been there. I've been to Australia even, but I've never been to to neither U.S. nor North American or South American. Never. It just mm. never happened. I don't know why. Well, now I've you have a reason to. You come visit us. And get Reiki. That's what, and get Reiki. That's, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Eventually, yeah. <laughs> Our, that's funny how I've never been to America. It's just somehow it's never happened. Hopefully, at some point, it won't be illegal to like move to a different area of land, or you know what I'm saying. Like it won't be so difficult to move around and just free travel. visas. You know, at least uh, I mean I, I told you I have a Russian passport. Yeah, and at least at least there. Uh, uh, we still need visas, yeah, right. to to Europe, yeah. passports, but, all that. Uh, you know, but passports, visas, etc. But at least it's become so easy. You know, uh, you 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 go to. They now have these visa centers. Like each embassy, each country has a visa center, and it's basically a commercial enterprise. It's not a consult anymore. It's a yeah. visa center, ah. which is a commercial yeah. service. And you pay maybe thirty euros uh, for thirty euros extra, and uh, they just do everything very efficiently. You know, and it's mm -hmm. like it takes two days, and you and you get a one year visa for for European Union. That's the that, um, that that's the positive aspect of the business thing is business yeah. does actually make things efficient and work well. True. Trip. It's like if you're comparing government offices versus oh. businesses. <laughs> Everybody knows what that is. I remember queuing for these in uh, early days, yeah, and it was like queuing for three days, and <laughs> you had night shifts and day shifts, and there were lists, and you had to mark, you know, yeah, you had to count every like four or five hours to. Uh, to, to re-register for the queue, you know, and if you don't come, you know, they delete you with pleasure. <laughs> Start <laughs> all over, go back to three days. That's how, yeah, that's how yeah. the queue moves, you know, and oh, it was something, something. Yeah. Different world, different world. And, I'll, uh, and, and I also, uh, what, uh, I, uh, I, I, something, something of the curiosity, perhaps. I, crossed the Berlin Wall while it still existed, Gary. Oh, really? yeah? You know? Yeah, I did. It was in uh, 1987. How was and that? Uh, the wall was still there. And yeah, yeah. Uh, this contrast, you know, talking about, you know, these experiences of, you know, different constructs and realms, you know, that was, that was one of the... Uh, you know, biggest contrasts I've ever seen in my life because the energy of two Berlins and the appearance and the energy was just remarkable. It was completely different on one side of the wall than the other? Totally. <laughs> totally. Like two different worlds, two different planets. Wow. You know, How did you get across? How would you cross it? <laughs> well, I had a Western German, uh, Western German visa. And, uh, I was... Uh, uh, visiting the friends there, and uh, so basically, you take a train. You take a train uh, in East Berlin. You used to take a train in East Berlin, and uh, the train would travel through above the wall, mm. and it would arrive to West Berlin. And there would be uh, border control, passport control, mm -hmm. and uh, that's how it worked. And well, vice versa, then you arrive to East Berlin, and there is border control, etc. Passport check. Yeah, and that's how it used to be. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing how an actual wall could create such a a difference in the energy. Very interesting. There is something similar, similar experience again related to energy. You know, or uh, it was in two thousand eight. 
and it was and I lived in Estonia, uh, uh, a small country uh, south south from Finland between Russia and Finland, and uh, Sweden is here. And so, so, and it used to be Soviet uh, part of Soviet Union, but uh, uh, it was independent before the Second World War, and so they regained the independence. And, uh, one and in 2004 uh, they joined European Union and uh, I lived uh, in Estonia for many years and in 2008 for the first time I uh, oh what a lovely dog <laughs> so in 2008 for the first time I went uh, I went to Estonia when it was already European Union mm-hmm yeah, because prior to that, uh, it was still just Estonia, not part of EU. And uh, and I was on the train, and it was dark, uh, and I just, you know, it was really dark outside. I couldn't see anything, so it was not physical appearances or anything. I was just standing in between the carriages and uh, smoking, and we started to cross the border. And all of a sudden, Gary, I felt as we approached Estonia, you know, there, like halfway at the bridge somewhere, while crossing the border, I just felt such a sudden huge change in energy. Mm. You know. Was it and a it was level g- change, like it felt higher or lower, or just different? Different. So different. Uh, I mean, wow, you know. <laughs> and it felt very, very much like constructs. Yeah. Like constructs feel, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was not some natural, organic flow kind of energy. It was construct. Mechanical. That's what. That's what. One of the things that Og said was that the actual states and nations are. Different dim- each one is a different dimension. Essentially, it's a different realm. Operates under different different people rule it. Different entities rule it. Even like the states we have here, you go from one to the other, and it's a totally different universe almost. Yeah, yeah, universe. Yeah, different universe. And especially in case of Estonia, I I, I always used to say Estonia is a special. It, it, it is one is a universe by on itself. And it's a small country. The population is just over one million, you know. Mm. Um, and it's relatively small in terms of territory. But because they're Finnic, Finno Greek, like mm. not Germanic, not Slavic, different tribe, you know, it feels like a different universe. You know, they have their source is somewhere else, you know, and yeah, they yeah, have yeah. a totally different universe yeah yeah Yeah. that's one of the things that's more believable if you are following any flat earth types thinking it's more believable that there are different energy states within the same realm Mm -hmm. it's more easy to understand or to, to feel it out Yeah. So, I'm just looking at the clock, Gary. And, uh, yeah, it didn't cut us <laughs> off. It didn't cut us which off I sh- half an hour. Which <laughs> I shouldn't be really, but on the other <laughs> hand, because I have to get up in less than five hours, <laughs> and I'm feeling a bit tired. Oh, no, oh, no. You- uh, yeah, unless you had any, any burning desires you want to talk about before we um, end? Mm. Anything you wanted to ask me that you didn't? I think, I think, I think uh, I've, I've said and asked everything for now. Okay. Well, good. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for for inviting them and uh, yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks very much. That's fun. I uh, I don't know if I uh, 
if it's been uh, contributive at all to why it's been good. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I, th I think it's pretty cool that I can talk to someone across the world and have instant. The internet is fast. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a helpful tool. Yeah, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, they have really good internet here, like a thousand megs per second or something crazy. What is it called, mm. Robbie? Sonic. Sonic? Yeah, Sonic Fiber. It's fiber, fiber optic internet. Right. I, I, because I'm in the hotel, I don't know what kind of internet they have here, but you're pretty it seems good. To work. You you kind of like did that. Well, I don't know how to say it, but like the the fade in audio. Uh, Distortion, you had that a few times, but for the most part, it's been very clear and crisp. So it must be, it must be quite reasonable. reasonable yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Ihor. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Gary, and uh, have a good time. Yeah, you too. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Bye. Bye. Pretty good. Good. Um, wonder if I can do a meditation. How are you doing, Robbie? Looking at Impala's or something. What the fuck? What are you looking at? This giant sheep festival. Why are you? What? <laughs> what are you doing? You guys have really easy Instagram effects, but sometimes I find that I still use to help shift because it drives me nuts and focus on the inside of the photo. Those are the 